J. Palin IPA. Translating research into action. For over 15 years, microcredit has been praised as an important ladder to help people get out of poverty. But does it really succeed? We're very fortunate today to have some of the leading researchers in this area who can start to answer that question. For a researcher working on microcredit, this is kind of a defining moment. I mean, I was thinking back to somewhere in the early 2000s, wandering around rural India, trying to persuade microcredit organizations that we should do some research on it. And their view was, everybody loves us. Why would you, we want research? The head of one of these organizations told us, he said, we sell microcredit, other people sell apples. There's no reason why we want any more research than they do. We, we, we're doing fine, thank you very much. What impact has microcredit had on the lives of the poor? And what lessons do we have to learn about where to take the industry from here? I want to be able to demonstrate with the World Bank Group that finance, that financial tools, that financial institutions, when properly set up, when properly utilized, can help and can make a difference. Although all of these projects started a long time ago, independently, they very much are after the same question, collected the same data. I thought it would be very useful to have them unified in one place. I think it is rare that we get a chance to do that. Why isn't it that when you offer the microcredit, they just come and beat down on the doors? In fact, that's what the organization we worked with expected when they opened for business. In fact, they and we were both surprised by how few people wanted it. We see the businesses get bigger in the sense that revenues go up, but so do expenditures. No increase in income or consumption for the population as a whole. These people who have decided they want to actually borrow, at least in the short run, this doesn't translate into higher income and to a visible improvement in uh, standards of living, at least over this kind of period. The credit is actually serving a role as an insurance product. The fact that we see some effect of the borrowing on livestock holdings does suggest that it, it may very well be serving that function in terms of building security. Perhaps what people really value more than anything else is to have stable lives. And maybe that's what we should be looking for with microcredit. Is microcredit the new usury? No, it's not. On the other hand, I think there's no evidence that this is the express way out of poverty. What is the real story? The big question that we would like to answer is what's the right product to have? What is it that we want microcredit to be? We see some people seem to be doing really very well when they get access to microcredit, 5% of the population. How do we target that 5%? I think we are still a long way away to really understand how this, these things work. What happens to the money? Uh, where does the money go? I think as a researcher, one, one way out of this is to be a bit more uh, adventurous. One of the things I'm most excited about is the fact that all these data from these six studies are now up, and so enterprising students and scholars can now do a lot more work with a lot more statistical precision. All of that means that we have so something to do. Another exciting 10 years are coming. Thank you very much for being here. 